Broadcasting across the nation, from the East Coast to the West. Keeping you up to date on technology, while enjoying a little whiskey on the side. With leading edge topics, along with special guests, to navigate technology in a segmented, stylized radio program. The information that will make you go, hmm. Pull up a seat, raise a glass with our hosts as we spend the next hour talking about technology for the common person. Welcome to Tech Time Radio with Nathan Mum. Welcome to Tech Time with Nathan Mum, the show that makes you go, hmm, technology news of the week, the show for the everyday person talking about technology, broadcasting across the nation with insightful segments on subjects weeks ahead of the mainstream media. We welcome our radio audience of 35 million listeners to an hour of insightful technology news. I'm Nathan Mum, your host, a technologist with over 30 years of technology expertise. Here are our co-host Mike Rodays in studio today. Mike's an award-winning author and a human behavior expert. We are live streaming here in the show on five of the most popular platforms, including YouTube, Twitch.tv, X, Facebook, and LinkedIn. And we encourage you to visit us online at techtimeradio.com and become a Patreon supporter at patreon.com forward slash techtimeradio. We are all friends from different backgrounds, but bring the best technology show possible each week for our family, friends, and fans to enjoy. So buckle up as our in-house producer, Odie, is back and at the control panel as we get ready to start today's show. Now on today's show. Today on Tech Time with Nathan Moe, we're going to be discussing a range of topics on the world of technology. We're going to start by exploring the challenges of deep fakes and the lack of regulations surrounding them. Next, we take a look at Elon Musk's Neuralink company and their recent claim of successfully implanting a wireless brain chip in a human. We also discuss Ring's recent decision to no longer allow police to request users' doorbell camera footage. Later in the show, we'll be joined by Nick Espinosa to discuss the major disruptions caused by cyber attacks and the sales of personal information online. In addition, we have our standard features, including Mike's mesmerizing moment, technology fail of the week, and a possible Nathan Nugget, and of course, our pick of the day whiskey tasting to see if our selected whiskey pick gets zero, one, or two thumbs up at the end of the show. Now we're going to move right into the show and start with the latest headlines in the world of technology. Here are our top technology stories of the week. Are you ready for this, Mike? Story number one, Elon Musk says Neuralink implanted wireless brain chips in a patient over the weekend. Of course, they didn't do it during the week. They had to do it during the weekend itself. We have Tim Larson with more on the story that broke this weekend. Tech billionaire Elon Musk has claimed his Neuralink company has successfully implanted one of its wireless brain chips in a human. In a post on X, formerly Twitter, He said, promising brain activity had been detected after the procedure and the patient was recovering well. The company's goal is to connect human brains to computers to help tackle complex neurological conditions. Neuralink's first product would be called telepathy. Telepathy would enable control of your phone or computer and through them almost any device just by thinking. Initial users will be those who have lost the use of their limbs. Imagine if Stephen Hawking could communicate faster than a speed typist or auctioneer. That is the goal. Back to you in the studio. All right, so we're going to talk about this. Now, for the brain-computer interface community, this is not the first company. That Neuralink is not the first company. So let's just be very clear on that. There is a select group of companies that have done this, and Neuralink is just one of those to join the small group, but successful in evaluating a long-term solution of implanting something or activity that happens in your brain being transcribed out into computer format, ones and zeros, to understand what's going on with the logic itself. Now, Elon Musk, quote, and posted, saying that it was a very adaptive and general process for the publicity that he's getting from his company. The independent verification, though, of Mr. Elon Musk's claims have not been out there, nor has Neuralink provided any information about the procedure that was said to have taken place. So So Elon has created a cyborg, and we don't know anything about it. And nobody's really confirming that he did it or not. Now, Neuralink has been criticized in the past. uh, Reporting December of 2022, the company engaged in testing, which resulted in the death of approximately 1,500 animals, including sheep, monkeys, and pigs. Uh, Mr. Musk's company was given permission, though, to test the chip. We talked about this by the FDA in May of 2023. 
Now, it's kind of an interesting deal to see why they decided to do this over a weekend time. They didn't make a huge announcement about it. He comes on out because he's just the media mogul right on his X platform. Comes on out and makes the announcement. And then all of a sudden, people are talking about it. They want to learn more. They want to learn about what's going on with the patient. And then it's been completely airtight silence from all the other organizations. What, what, what would you take of why that happens, Mike? They're, they're trying to moderate or mitigate, uh, well, spin control, I guess. Do you think you know, the they're, Musk they're, shouldn't have tweeted that out probably and he's getting you know, in trouble? Musk, Musk is always doing things that are very impulsive like that. And okay. I imagine that this is one of them where he's saying things that he probably shouldn't be saying yet. And posting it. And posting it, considering that uh, only in December of 2022, they were having all these problems with Neuralink and these animal testings. And then not not even a year later, they're getting FDA approval for human testing. And so now we have the first human subject for Neuralink, even though this brain implants uh, are not a new thing. Well, it's interesting because his is pretty evasive, right? So his is like the old, literally, it's like the Matrix version, right? You literally have a, a device I, that you plug into. You know, we've talked about this before, and you know how cringy this is to me. This this yeah. is this is stuff that just uh, is crazy to me. Okay. Um, the end result is well, the purported end result. Let's yeah. let's put it that way. Is something that that. I can see the benefits of because yeah, I you know if you if you can use if you can use these devices to increase your accessibility to life in general. Yeah, and you didn't have the you had limbs that you can do stuff. But, yep. but what other nefarious things are these going to be? We're already talking about using these to think to your phone. So yeah. if you're if you're in, if you're <laughs> telepathically linking to your phone, which is simply using airwaves. Yep. How many how, how many problems are we going to see with uh, just think of hacking into that hacking into, into that Bluetooth Bluetooth frequency or whatever frequency because yeah. you can't use it for radio frequency because those are all FC uh, C uh, prioritized so you can't use any of those so they're going to have to be using some type of either a Zigbee uh, type of deal or Bluetooth type of transmitting out to these devices which can yeah. easily be so, compromised so I'm you know this is one of the problems that I have with this is the I. As a human, as a species, we're not we're not really responsible enough for these types of technology. And I would have I would have figured Elon Musk would have had like this big type of deal where you put him in the big room, you have all the cameras around this person, you're taking a look at this guy's vitals, you're, you're building really, this up. Yeah, kinda, but clearly, it was done. It, it sounds like like some back shed well, type if, of deal if, that was no one knows about, and then boom, we are going to announce that we did it. I'm sure there's a lot of testing that's going on behind the scenes. I would think that if Elon Musk is all so into this, that he should have been the first patient. I think <laughs> there you go. That should have been. All right, let's go to story number two. And I don't think we're in an, entering into an enlightened age. Either. You don't think so no. either? No. Okay. I, I would agree with I'm, you. There. I'm really, it's, it's, it's hard to, yeah. Okay. All right. Story number two. Well, if you haven't heard, are you a Swifty? Uh, I'm not, but I'm a big, uh, I'm a big Kansas City fan for the NFL team for Kansas City. Oh Chiefs. yeah, you were you were talking so I, about I, so Travis Kelce and you get to hear about uh, uh, Taylor. Uh, she's at every game now because her and the tight end are dating, and wow, that's yeah. just that's well. If you fun. haven't heard, okay. uh, Taylor Swift has been the victim of a deep fake. Okay, uh, which has been very problematic, and it's one of the top stories of of. The, the last few days. Uh, the issue made headlines this week as bogus pornographic images of her purporting to show Taylor Swift okay. uh, on X, Telegram, and other social media platforms. Okay. Uh, many of the postings were remo- removed, but not before some of them racked up millions of views. The assault on Swift's famous image serves as a reminder of how deep fakes have become easier to make in recent years. A number of apps can swap a person's face onto a, others. Media with high fidelity and the latest iterations promise to use AI to generate even more convincing images and video. Deep fakes are a growing challenge, and there is little regulation behind it to mitigate it. The risk of damage from deep fakes is far ranging from the appropriation of women's faces to make explicit 
videos to the use of celebrities and unapproved promotions and manipulated images in political disinformation campaigns. Okay. Uh, the risks were highlighted way back in 2017. I don't know if you remember this, but when uh, they used a visual form of lip syncing to generate several very realistic videos of former President uh, Barack Obama, Obama speaking. Yep, I remember that. Yep. Remember those? Yep. Uh, in the past month, visitors to YouTube, Facebook, and other platforms have seen video ads purporting to show Jennifer Aniston offering a so good it's delusional deal on Apple iPhones, okay. or laptops, rather. And last October, actor Tom Hanks warned people that an AI was using his image seemingly to sell dental insurance online. I remember that. Yeah, we talked about we, that on we the had show. That too. Yep, yep. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, that's just the ongoing thing that uh, our technology is being used for. To, to do to people. We kind of talked about how to take a look at deep fakes to see if it's a deep fake, right? So first off, if someone's selling you something too good to be true, what's the old this, adage on that? If it's yeah, too, it's good, too to good to be, be true, true, it probably, it's probably is. not. Correct. Um, we've talked about this before in that the fact that uh, prior to this, there's there's that uncanny valley where we sort of detect these sort of things naturally. But as the technology gets better and better, that valley gets smaller. It does. So there's a guy that does this on uh, TikTok and YouTube all the time, and he does. A whole, he's kind of an actor that looks like uh, Tom Cruise, and so he'll do like Tom. Oh yeah, Cruise. I've seen that guy. Yeah, he like he'll be in the back doing dishes and a bunch of other type of stuff. Pretty funny. They absolutely call it deep fake Tom Cruise. I mean, that's how they tag it, so you mm-hmm. absolutely know that you're doing it. But it is amazing what they do because they do put the image of Tom. Uh, Cruz's face on the guy itself after he's done, and he's got kind of the same body build and everything. And it is amazingly uh, accurate looking when you look at it, even if you do screen by screen shot on what they can do now with the AI technology and that. Well, one of the problems that we have is that the more and more we utilize screens for our daily consumption of things, the more and more we're going to buy into things based on what we're seeing. All right. So I think that's another aspect of this that we're not that's really not out there is that it, the deep fake may not be as convincing as other deep fakes, but because we are already activating this sort of uh, virtual idea that we're going to see a lot more problems. Okay. All right. Let's go to story number three. Ring will no longer allow police to request users doorbell camera footage. Let's go to Corinne Westland for more on the story. Amazon-owned Ring will stop allowing police departments to request doorbell camera footage from users, marking an end to a feature that has drawn criticism from privacy advocates. The company did not provide a reason for the change, but it might have to do with Amazon paying over $30 million in claims. Critics have stressed that users' ability to report what they see as suspicious behavior can change neighborhoods into places of constant surveillance and lead to racial profiling. Ring changed its policy in 2021 to make police requests publicly visible through its Neighbors app. Law enforcement agencies could send private emails to Ring owners who lived near an area of active investigation requesting video footage. However, even with the changes, law enforcement agencies can still access videos using a search warrant. Privacy is essential, and this change is something that is a positive step forward. All right, so what, this changes something that is a positive step. Forward. Well, this is kind of a positive. So there is a little bit more privacy. So what was happening before is in Ring has their own application called Neighbor. And in yes, I know, and, I, I know about the Neighbor app. Okay, and so you can so it's like a tattletale app, right? It's a, it's totally a tattletale. App. And, and so what was happening is police would go into an area, maybe there was crime or something specifically in the normally uh, lower income housing areas themselves, asking for people to essentially narc on other people, then using that footage to then make decisions on if they wanted to search for a warrant, if they had information that was going on. And it's been talked about for over two years now specifically on is that the right thing to do? Should the police be able to contact you, Mike Gorday, that you live in a certain location and there's criminal activity and pump you up saying, can you please send us all your footage you got? Can you maybe turn your camera a little bit to the north? It'd be great to see that shot of of the street so that we can get more information from you. And they're taking that option away. 
Ring is taking that option away? The Ring and Amazon, Amazon. Is, is removing that option. Cops okay. can no longer. So if if I have a, and I don't have a Ring camera, but I was just telling you I need to get one. Yep, yep. If I don't have a Ring, or if I have a Ring camera and the cop, something happens in my neighborhood and my Ring camera maybe caught it, I can no longer give them that video unless there's a, a Well, so, so you can still give it to them. So it's not saying that you couldn't give it to the police department. What it's saying is the current system that they had in there was actually police would know that you were a ring user oh, in the area. Okay. And All the right. police department would then contact you and say, hey, we know that you live in kind of a sketch neighborhood. We would like you to maybe put your ring camera a little bit out here so on they the street. Were, they were getting... Footage and information from Amazon. They were, prompt, they were or, prompting users and calling them up and, and sending okay. them emails saying, hey, I need this shot. Can you do it? And then by by everybody's uh, sure I want to help out the cops type of deal, they would end up doing that. And instead of having that be so you're targeting people, now the police are going to have to do their own investigation work before it comes. Up. Now, I think it has nothing to do with Ring or Amazon trying to be polite. I think it has to all do no, with that $30 billion that they got. $30 uh, million or $30 billion? Uh, 30, did, did I say $30 billion? $30 million, sorry. $30, $30 million. million that they had to pay uh, back. Now, also That's probably Ring, why I can't get my deliveries on time anymore. Well, maybe. Uh, Ring also <laughs> agreed to pay $5.8 million uh, to the Federal Trade Commission over allegations the company let employees and contractors access users' videos. So think of being a, a contractor yeah, so, see on there. And, and, you have, and you have somebody that you want to go take a look at, and all of a sudden you want to go pop down to some celebrity in L.A., and you want to look at all their ring footage they have. You can track in and out when celebrities are coming on in. You're calling TMZ on the side. Hey, uh, so-and-so's over here. I mean, they used to have the employees had the ability yeah. for them to go and take yeah. a look at that. The amount of stuff that goes on behind just this simple piece of technology is astounding. It's also interesting, 2022, Ring disclosed it and handed over 11 videos to police without notifying the users that you're due to extension or emergency circumstances, one of the categories that allows them to share videos without permission from the owners. Out of those 11 videos, one of those videos itself had nothing to do with the case, brought up a case on somebody, and then was found out that that video was somebody completely different. So, again, this is where you're trying to kind of be ahead of the criminal activity, but that's the same type of thing that got people in trouble in the 70s and 80s when this, they threw this, people in jail yeah, for, well, this for is, stuff this that they should I mean, this is, this is going to continue to happen, uh, and we're going to continue to see envelope pushing by investigators versus law versus what's, what's considered private, what's but well, at least gone. Amazon isn't selling it now, only because probably they got probably fined. because they keep getting fined, baked for yeah, it. That's that's exactly right. All right, well that ends our top technology stories of the week. When we return, we got Nick Espinoza from Security Fanatics back in studio. We're gonna, I'm sure we can. We're gonna get some information about this one. We're gonna talk about cybercrime, espionage, data breach, all in our featured segment. You're listening to Tech Time with Nathan Mum. We'll see you after this commercial break. This is Mark and Greg for Copiers Northwest with a terrific offer called Printer Care Plus. It's simple. Buy HP printer cartridges from Copiers Northwest and we'll service your current printers for free. That sounds too good to be true. It's made possible due to our HP Copiers Northwest relationship. Copiers Northwest is an HP Platinum partner. One of only two in the entire Northwest. And now with Printer Care Plus, Copiers Northwest will provide free printer service as long as they purchase genuine HP cartridges from Copiers Northwest. That's right. IT departments no longer have to service printers. Or fix paper jams with Printer Care Plus. They can focus on more strategic initiatives. And let our experienced technicians keep their HP printers up and running. Sounds like a love-love relationship for IT departments. Don't get too carried away. So how do they get more details on Printer Care Plus? Call Copiers Northwest today, 206-282-1200, or visit copiersnw.com. Copiers Northwest. New ideas, new solutions. Welcome back to Tech Time with Nathan Mum. Our show covers the weekly top technology subjects without any political agenda. We verify the facts and we do it with a sense of humor in less than 60 minutes. And of course, with a little whiskey on the side. Today, Mark Gregoire, our whiskey connoisseur, joins us in studio. Mark, Hello. what are we tasting today? Well, gentlemen, today we have Shanks Homestead Sour Mash Whiskey from 2023. Okay. Okay. Uh, Does that uh, mean it's just a year old? 
So it's, no, that just they have one one year one release a year. All right, well, tell us a little bit about. I like the bottle. It's got a nice little emblem on the front. It's got a cork top. So tell us a little bit Are you about. Serious? Uh, yeah, <laughs> trying to explain what it looks like. Well, well, let me tell you a little about it from Michter's website. Okay. Shanks is a Kentucky sour mash whiskey made with a substantial amount of rye. The unique character of this 2023 offering results from its being produced with malted rye in the recipe. First year that they've done that. Additionally, for its maturation, we utilized two different and quite special barrel profiles. A portion of it was aged in 18th month, naturally air-dried and seasoned wood, with their signature toast and char profile, and a portion was aged in a special toasted French oak barrel that was made from 24-month air-dried wood sourced from a region in France. And they say this is a warm and rich expression, which highlights spice fruit, nougat, honey, and spiced chocolate. Nougat, whis- you, never, you don't hear that very often. You get don't. nougat. So whiskey okay. to savor, complemented by highlights of smooth spice, dried fruit, and honey. You know, I feel like there's a conspiracy going on. Why is that? Because we sure are drinking a lot of rye whiskey. Well, you, but you've turned well, no, your, your, your palate has turned to liking this. Mike, let me give you the specs. It okay. is not a rye. It's oh. not considered a rye. Okay. It's American whiskey. The mash bill is unknown, but it's not high enough. It's not 51% rye, so it cannot be called a rye. It's also not 51% corn. Really? So it cannot be called a bourbon. So. Yeah, I mean that's my favorite is bourbons. We yeah. haven't had so it's a, we, we haven't had bourbons. It's on different in a proportion long time. of those mash bills. Now it's from as we mentioned, Michter's Distillery. It's um, it's a bottle of four hundred and eleven of two thousand nine hundred and thirty eight. Yeah, it's bottled in Louisville, Kentucky. Now it says bottled, not distilled, so we don't quite know where the juice is from. They okay. could have subcontracted that. It's non age stated. It's Canadian whiskey. It is not Canadian whiskey. No, it's not whiskey. Canadian whiskey. It doesn't taste anything like it. It's ninety one point two proof. The mash bills we just talked about is undisclosed. MSRP on this is one hundred and ten, but you'll find it online for about two twenty five. Two twenty five. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah, that's not something going to be on your shelf. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> All right. It does it, taste good. It does taste it, good. If you find it at the right place, 110 bucks. 110 bucks. What a deal. All right, I'm liking this. You know, it does have that spice taste, though. Can you taste the nougat? Oh, I cannot taste the nougat. Okay. All right. Or nougat. That's the only thing I care about. Okay. You, are you going to taste the nougat? I don't taste the nougat. Okay. All right. Well, the spicy yeah. stuff is oh. there, though. Okay. So, Nathan and Mike, don't forget to remind our... Listeners to like and subscribe. In addition, please put a comment in there if you've had this whiskey. Okay. Or if you have want a whiskey for us to take a look at, and we'll see if we can source it. You did. You got a good compliment on uh, LinkedIn. Someone was like wanting to learn more and more about whiskey stuff. There's plenty of YouTube for that. There you go. Okay. All right. Well, with our wow. first whiskey tasting completed, let's move on to our future segment. Today, we have our technology expert, Nick Espinosa, joining the show. Nick Espinosa is an expert in cybersecurity and network infrastructure. He has consulted with clients ranging from small business to Fortune 100 levels. In 1998, at the age of 19, Nick founded Windy City Networks, which he later acquired uh, in 2015. He then created the Security Fanatics, where he is the chief security fanatic. Let's welcome Nick to the Comcast video stream and start our next segment. Welcome to the segment we call Ask the Experts. With our Tech Time Radio expert, Nick Espinoza. Uh, hey, Nick. Uh, hey, Nick. How are you doing? I'm all right. I'm all right. And Mike, why do you want to bug your house, man? Uh, ring I doorbell? don't. You do not need a ring doorbell. I don't, but you. somebody is stealing my Amazon packages. Are, are, are you sure they're stealing your Amazon packages? So far, I I got something stolen for the first time yesterday. Okay. All right. Thanks. Well, we, we, can, we can put, you know, you could go and get a Harbor Freight camera system. And for I, a couple I bucks. don't want a ring camera, but, okay. you know, I'm like, it does oh. alert you. Well, I did a I, I did a test. Yeah, I, I bought some cheap thing off of Amazon. Oh, uh, uh-huh. To be delivered today to see if somebody is going to oh steal it, steal it. Okay, there you go. All right, so there you go. Go to so Mike Gorday's house to steal his if, cheap whatever. If it's you got. gone, if yeah. it's gone when I get home, I'm going to have to figure out a new way of getting stuff delivered. All right, Nick. Well, welcome to the show. Let's talk about some breaking news here. Let's there is it. so much stuff going on. Let's talk about this. Three yes, former give me a reason to drink, Nick. That's right. Three former <laughs> Department of Homeland Security DHS employees were sentenced to prison for stealing proprietary U.S. government software and databases containing the personal data of 200,000 federal employees. How does this happen? And what's going on with this story, Nick? 
So obviously it's lack of internal controls, but like straight from the DOJ press release, pretty much from January 26, a few days ago, Charles Edward, Sonal Patel, and uh, Murali Venkata, as you mentioned, literally stole over 200,000 records from employees of Department of Homeland Security, Office of Inspector General, as well as United States Postal Service's Office of Inspector General as well. Now, as you mentioned, they also stole software and all of that, but they plan to use that stolen software and database to essentially create software that they could then sell <laughs> to the government agencies. And so as part of this, they basically disclosed that, you know, they stole the software and the databases containing all of this, but they decided to outsource the development of their new fancy software they were going to sell to the government to India, meaning they just dumped a whole bunch of stuff a whole bunch of personally identifiable information on sensitive government employees to a foreign country. And while India is an ally, there ain't that close, right? right. So well. this is obviously a huge thing. And then obviously they went through and tried to delete their text messages and, and cover up the crime. But, you know, the Internet and the cloud. Man, it, it knows everything. Is this so like is this like are. stupid criminals? Remember, remember yeah, that? Yeah, well, this well, but this is still like this is our government. And we're going to be talking about this because our government needs to either get their act up, and they and we're I'm going to talk about Everybody this. My technology has to get their failed. Act up. Yeah, we're going to talk about this technology failed because there's a whole county where they're completely down right now, and we'll talk about that later. But it is amazing. Uh-huh. That all of our government stuff, they, they clearly don't pay a high end wage of salaries to individuals. People don't really value their jobs, but th- that has the most important sensitive information of anything. They, yeah. there should be, they should be paid very well, and there should be some type of deal where I want to be a government IT person because I can protect X, Y, and Z instead of saying I'd rather go work for the private sector because I make well, 3X more yeah, money. Yeah, but that's always going to be there. Well, uh, I don't know. Well, go- gov- government is not, a, is not about high salaries. It's about security. Is that what it is? Right. Yeah. Well, it's, it's not so. Yeah. I mean, to that point, it's also about training, but depending on the level of sensitivity of the data, you don't necessarily have to be a U.S. citizen working for the U.S. government. You can be a U.S. person, meaning you are residing in the United States, but you're not a citizen and still be hired and contracted and get access to this kind of stuff. Essentially, the the standard is as long as you're deemed an ethical person and you're getting trained, you're good to go, you know, and obviously you may have to pass background checks and clearances of all of that. But but this is this is something that I think is really pervasive in the federal government right now. I mean, for God's sakes, we had like a 21 year old kid that's like in the military. How was he getting classified information so he could dump it out to all his gamer buddies on Discord last year? I yeah. mean, we have a very serious issue with this in the government. All right. Well, now we're going to go from the government to the private sector. It doesn't get much better here. <laughs> no, it doesn't. All right. Microsoft security team recently detected an attack on their corporate systems. We talked about this last week, right? The midnight, midnight blizzard. blizzard yep. Yeah. Russian sponsored state attack. Um, interesting though, I want to get Nick's perspective on this. Exactly. How did this happen? And the biggest question I have is how was it that this person was in their systems for months without being detected? Because apparently intrusion detection is not a thing Microsoft is good at. <laughs> no <laughs> offense to Microsoft, but honestly, so what you're talking about is APT or advanced, uh, advanced persistent threat number 29 as they're identified, aka Cozy Bear, aka Midnight Blizzard, aka Russian intelligence or their cutouts by other fun names. They essentially broke into a single Microsoft mailbox, were able to gain elevated privileges, meaning they were able to basically up convert to more access. And then they started looking through Microsoft employee accounts. But here's the thing, and this is what makes it really interesting, according to the Microsoft researchers and their disclosures, is that they weren't looking to like ransom Microsoft out, or they weren't looking to basically like insert deeper infections as far as we know. They were just looking for information on themselves. Essentially, they wanted to know what Microsoft knew about them which, I mean, makes sense. Now, think about this in the 2024 election where you have a whole bunch of foreign intelligence agencies that are trying to break into congressional campaigns, senatorial campaigns, presidential campaigns, so disinformation, et cetera, et cetera. It's just name of the game right now. And so if Microsoft uh, basically threat researchers and other researchers, threat researchers, know their tactics, they'd be less inf- effective breaking into places, right? And so that's essentially what we think they were doing was they were looking through this and saying, oh, Microsoft knows this. We have to change up this tactic so we can evade what they already know about us. And for the record, Cozy Bear, Midnight Blizzard, Russian Intelligence, ABT29, whatever you want to call them, just literally the last couple of days, HP Enterprise disclosed that they got hit by that group as well. And they also have a threat intelligence research division that's probably as big as Microsoft. So 
here we are. I mean, this is this is the world we're living in. So is so, this a kind of attack that that could lead to what you were talking about previously? Where they have a ransom? Were they, I, were they able to to re- yeah find really deep information? I, so I this is what I think the new. Well, I don't know, Nick. We'll, we'll get from you, but I think the new idea on this is to try to get information. If they had like insider news or insider trading information, Microsoft's going to buy this company. Microsoft's going to do that. I think that now becomes a more coveted uh, cup of of poison well, yeah, to he, gather yeah, than it is to say, get money. He's he yeah. yeah, but he's saying that they got in there and they were looking for information from Microsoft about them yep. to see right. what kind of intelligence they had on them. Yep. Right. Right. And the only reason why, if I'm breaking into an organization, establishing command and control, I am trying to be as quiet as I can. I'm trying to spread out as much as I can so that I'm not going to be detected. And if I am detected on one technique, I'm going to switch it up. I'm going to change the game. Now, when you're looking at basically a Russian intelligence cutout, uh, which is essentially what they are, what they're looking for are an understanding of how their adversaries, a.k.a. Microsoft, a.k.a. other intelligence outfits that are adversarial to them, a.k.a. other corporations that detect threat, know about them so that they can change up. And so when you're looking at that specifically as they are going for their own information on what they know, it's because they want to become better at evading threat detection technologies, whether it's from Microsoft or anybody else. And then you put that on the backdrop of what is going to be a contentious presidential election that already we're seeing fingerprints of deep fake, artificial intelligence all over the place. This is going to be a huge problem. And so that's what we're lining up for. So the most logical conclusion right here is they're looking to be more evasive. They're looking not to be detected as they are breaking into Office 365, right? And what is using Office 365 very frequently this year? Congressional campaigns, senatorial <laughs> campaigns, yep, yep, presidential yep. campaigns, you know? So here we are. I mean, that's, I think, the name of the game here. All right. So now let's go to the next thing. China claims it cracked Apple's airdrops encryption to identify senders. Now, this is interesting because I, I, I saw some articles. I don't know if they were Apple spin articles that said that they didn't really grab all the information and they could just no. do some of the information. I see other articles coming on out that are saying they absolutely got the identifying senders claims of information with the encryption right. codes in there. So tell us what's going on on this, Nick, and, and uh, which one is true. Is it the Apple kind of spin where they got some of it and none of it or is it what China's saying? So this this is what we know thus far. And for the record, Apple people, you're just in the same boat with Android and Windows and everybody else. Don't think you're rocking Fort Knox when you're using an Apple product. We infect them all the time. But understand what the Chinese government is essentially looking for. They know that AirDrop, and essentially this is basically open Bluetooth. If you've got it open on your iPhone as you're walking around, your iPhone will sense another iPhone with AirDrop open, and you can send pictures and stuff like that to that iPhone. We had a rash of that here in the United States where people were sending not fully clothed pictures of specific body parts to people in the vicinity. So, yep. so Dang, this is, think this about is these pretty... Neuralink people. <laughs> yeah. Oh my yeah. God. Don't even like, you want that imprinted in your brain, but anyway, <laughs> um, so the Chinese authorities are looking for activists that are against the, basically the communist government that China runs. And these activists were using airdrop to distribute uh, essentially a whole bunch of uh, propaganda or anti-government propaganda, uh, you know, against the government, you know, down with G or whatever it was. And so by virtue, of that, they first went to Apple to say, hey, you've got to shut this down. You've got to do something. Apple released an update for China that basically put the the airdrop in privacy mode by default as opposed to open. And so you could go and you could open it, no big deal. And so that was a halfway measure. But what they ended up finding out or the Chinese intelligence figured out is that they could use a methodology known as rainbow table attacks, uh, essentially to figure out how to crack the pretty weak encryption, uh, you know, in AirDrop. Now, for the record, AirDrop is encrypted, but what it does is it broad, broadcasts Bluetooth that contain partial cryptographic hashes or encryption. And so by virtue of that, they were able to use this methodology that's been around since the 80s, for the record, of rainbow tables to cut down that time to attack. And they were able to expose the sender's phone number and possibly or the email address and or the email address. And so they didn't need to know all your full information. They just needed to know your phone number because it's heavily regulated in China once you buy a phone or your email address, which is also heavy regulated. So if that's exposed and you're sending this, you're going to jail. There that's might pretty be much how it works over there. Disappearances. Uh, there yeah, you go. So, All right. So last thing here, finally, there's reports of scams on Amazons that authors should be aware of. Now, we have an author in studio. Mike wrote a book, and he published it on Amazon. 
I got it for Christmas. So I appreciated the signature on that. That was my Christmas gift. So explain to me what the scam is in the printing scam, quote unquote, that is happening on Amazon. Yeah, and this one is nuts. And for the record, also, I co-authored a book years ago that is <laughs> you can buy. On okay, Amazon. I gotta get that from you. I gotta get that I'm from not, you too, I'm Nick. Big, I'm not a big fan of this at all. I'm okay. not a big fan of this at all. But the example that 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 I found in one of the articles I was reading about this was essentially AI researcher Melanie Mitchell. She wrote a book called Artificial Intelligence: A Guide for Thinking Humans in 2019. And by virtue of that, she went looking on Amazon for her book when it was published. And she found another book with her title that was published last September, meaning it's kind of an update. Now, that fake book is only 45 pages long, and it essentially kind of mirrored what what her ideas were, but it was clearly written by artificial intelligence. And so it lists another author that had no bio, no internet presence, anything like that. And so this is obviously a huge issue. And so they put it through a deep fake detector by a company called Reality Defender, and the detector said, yeah, this is 99% written by artificial intelligence. And the problem is there's a ton of them all over Amazon's Kindle store. And so when you're going looking for Melanie Mitchell's book or you know Mike's book, whatever, there could be a knockoff of there. And here's the kicker of the whole thing. <clears throat> Some copyright scholars say it's fine. It's actually legal as long as it doesn't do word for word plagiarism. So think about Cliff Notes, for example. We yep. all had to struggle and pound our heads through Shakespeare in high school, so we all got Cliff Notes to understand what on earth Shakespeare was talking about. 1195 down at the local pharmacy yeah. in the little Ooh. yellow books. You know, the, fact that, exactly. the fact that you know that is just very telling. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But that's the point, right? Because Cliff Notes doesn't actually copy the book. It paraphrases. Right. Right. And so, And so by virtue of that, that's the issue. But intellectual property experts are actually split on this because there's an obvious difference between cliff notes, which is an analysis of a book, yep. et cetera, et cetera, versus just a complete ripoff and rewording of something. And the only precedent we have is from 2017 when Penguin Random House sued authors who created a children's book uh, or editions of basically their titles in children's format. And essentially the court said, no, that's too close. You can't do that. And so until somebody sues somebody, I think we're in this boat. So when you're going on Amazon, you've got to make sure you're getting Melanie Mitchell's book that's going to be a few hundred pages long as opposed to a 45-page knockoff. Make gotcha. sure you're doing your homework. Make sure you're doing Everything, it's, everything's got to do, do it's, your homework. It's but, gonna, I mean, this is this is not yeah. new. I mean, no, this is this. I've had, this, this is I've just had using people, AI now. I've had people no, steal my articles and put their name on it and put it on other websites. Oh, I've had this too. too. I've, yeah. I, I with like with my articles for Forbes, my five laws of cybersecurity, I can't tell you how many times I've seen that ripped off. But but what what makes this unprecedented is not the fact that there are going to be forgeries out there. It's that a artificial intelligence at a click of a button, you can say, take these hundred books and rewrite them. And in seconds, you've got basically a copy of all these that you're dumping out, you know, for two bucks on Amazon, making a ton of money until you're found. And then you set up shop meaning the spam is getting worse. In fact, my daily video today is on how this is becoming ungovernable. It's Gee. absolutely through the rules. Obituaries are another one where people are making money by ripping off obituaries. It's absolutely nuts. It's crazy. Right. I feel like I had a problem with this when we started the Chad GPT stuff. <laughs> well, okay. All Last right. <laughs> okay, Nick, <laughs> thank you so much for coming on the show. It's always a pleasure. Where wow. can our listeners find out more information about you and connect with you outside of our show? Sure. You can like, share, follow me on Facebook and Twitter at Nick AESP. You can find me on YouTube at slash Nick Espinoza and come hang out. I love engaging with people. So All right. come say hi. All right, Nick, I can't wait to have you back on again. It's always an yeah. uplifting team. And I'm going to go to a commercial Thanks, break Nick, so we can drink. Nick, I need drink. a drink now. That's right. All right. Well, that <laughs> ends our <laughs> Ask the Expert with Nick Espinoza. Up next, we have This Week in Technology. So now would be a great time to enjoy a little whiskey on the side as we're going to be doing so during the break. You're listening to Tech Time Radio with Nathan Mum. See you in a few minutes. Hey, Mike. Yeah, what's up? Hey, so you know what? We need people to start liking our uh, social media page. If you like our show, if you really like us, That's we could use your support on Patreon.com. Or is it Patreon? I think it's Patreon. Okay, Patreon. If you really like us, you can And you say like I'm the English guy? Patreon.com. I, I butcher the English language? You know you butcher the English okay, language so it's all pa the time. It's Patreon.com. Patreon.com. If, really slash... like, if you really like our show... You can subscribe to Patreon.com and help us out. Oh, and you can visit us on that Facebook platform. You know the one that Zuckerberg owns? The one that we always bag on? Yeah, you can. we're on Facebook, too. Yeah, like us on Facebook. Do you know what our Facebook page is? Tech Time Radio. At Tech Time Radio. Yeah. You know what? There's a, there's a trend here. 
It seems to be that there's a trend, and that's Tech Time Radio. Or you can even Instagram with us. And that's at Tech Time Radio. That's at Tech Time Radio. Or you can find us on TikTok. And it's Tech Time Radio. It's at Tech Time Radio. Like and subscribe to our social media. Like us today. We need you to like us. Like us and subscribe. That's it? That's it. That's that simple. And now, let's look back at this week in technology. Oh, right. We're going to go all the way back to January 31st, 1995, when AT&T and VLSI come up with a technology announcement to protect against eavesdropping. We're talking all about t- technology right now. But did you realize that AT&T, Bell Laboratories, and VLSI Technology announced plans to develop a strategy for protecting communication devices from eavesdroppers? VLSI Technology was an American company that designed and manufactured custom and semi-custom integrated circuits. VLSI Technology Partnership developed strategies for protecting communication devices from eavesdropping by including security chips in devices. Essentially, VSI came to the ability to actually stop and enable sending packet information ahead and behind of each of the conversations they had to ensure that no one was taking the information and eavesdropping in your conversations themselves. Okay, well, this has nothing to do with me walking behind the guy in Target who's... On his cell phone? Uh, on no, his no, cell these, phone. this was on landlines, but specifically <laughs> in 1995, that was when the internet was just taking uh, off, yeah, right? Yeah, So Windows 95 came on out. Everybody's starting to use Netscape as their browser. A couple people using Internet Explorer. Ask Jeeves, buddy. Yeah, and so essentially they came on up with the ability to have digital packets, which is essentially were an offshoot of what the modem was actually doing to ensure that no one other than the two people having a conversation could have it securely. So no government could listen in on it. Good for no them. No individual could listen on I feel it. Like, I feel like that really didn't do a whole lot. I don't think that they're the using that now talk anymore. About today. But that was essentially what happened then. All right. Well, this that is, was. I feel like this is our Halloween episode to tell you the no, truth. No, no, no. This is just what's going on in the technology this week. All right. Well, that was this week in technology. If you ever wanted to watch some tech time history with over 180 weekly broadcasts spanning three plus years. A video podcast and blog information. You can visit us at techtimeradio.com to watch our older shows or join our Tech Timers Facebook group to talk with us live all the time. We're going to take a commercial break. When we return, we have Mark's Whiskey Mumble Review. We'll see you after the break. Hello, my name is Arthur, and my life's work is connecting people with coffee. Story Coffee is a small batch specialty coffee company that uses technology to connect people to each product resource, which allows farmers to unlock their economic freedom. Try our medium roast founder series coffee, which is an exotic bourbon variety that is smooth, fresh, and elegant at storycoffee.com. That's S-T-O-R-I coffee.com. Today, you can get your first bag free when you subscribe at storycoffee.com with code TECHTIME. That's S-T-O-R-I coffee.com. The segment we've been waiting all week for, Mark's Whiskey Mumble. I am back, gentlemen. All right, we're excited. I am too. I'm here to ask you today, you, January you were here 30th. Last week too. Uh, what, what is that? January 30th. Today is January 30th. Okay. And today is um, the last. The last. The last day. Or no, the 31st. No, the last the day almost of last day of January. Well, that, that's true. Uh, snowman Come. day. No. No. Okay. It is yodel for your neighbor's day, everybody. Oh. Okay. Now, you do not have to be from the Swiss Alps to fill the air with the sounds of yodeling. You can be no, funny, no, cro- croaky, okay. or, or beautiful. doesn't okay. matter. For today, you get to yodel. Every year, this day encourages people to try their hand at yodeling. It motivates them to get to know people around them better by inviting them to yodel along. I am looking forward to hearing Nathan and Mike, Mike harmonizing on their yodeling. Oh, yeah, Let's do it. Gonna, that's not going to No, no, stop. Do you ever watch The Price is Right, where they have the mountain yes. climber go up? I, I remember that. Stop it. Don't do that. Don't do that. You invited your neighbor, Nathan, and he rejected you. Oh, I am sorry. No, right. I joined in. I don't okay, yodel. Okay. You don't yodel? No. Okay, <laughs> what do you do, Mike? <laughs> yeah, not a lot. <laughs> All right. No, all right. All right well, let's, talk, not let's get back to the whiskey. We have a very interesting story with this whiskey. Oh, there no. we go. Oh, <laughs> there you go, Odie. Thank you so much. Thank all right, you. so there we go. 
beautiful voice you have there, Odie. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks a lot for that. All right, John Shank, who this whiskey was named after, was a Swiss Mennonite farmer, and he probably yodeled. Okay. Now, Shank produced whiskey what? from rye grain, a favorite local crop in Pennsylvania, Blue Mountain Valley, where the distillery was located. Now, according to Pennsylvania historic lore, this particular rye whiskey was so valued that when the Revolutionary War broke out, General George Washington visited the distillery and purchased whiskey to fortify his men as they hunkered down in their camp through the long, brutal winter at Valley Forge. Wow. Over 200 years later, the Michter's Pennsylvania management would say Michter's was the whiskey that warmed the American Revolution. I like that. Woohoo. Kind of warms my heart. I don't, I don't. Hey, you already got it through your whole know. glass here. What, are, you, are you enjoying this? Oh, yeah, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> he started out, you're like, ah, that, 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 it's really I good. Would just say, I was just making a commentary on the fact that but we, you like we this, keep so. getting a lot of rye stuff. But you like this? Oh, uh, yeah. You love this a lot. Okay, all right. Now, for me, I'm generally a sh- not a Shanks fanboy. Uh-huh. I tend to gravitate to its sister, Bourbon Bomberger's. Shanks is usually fine, though very peanut forward, very similar to Booker's and other Jim Bean products. But this year is different. For the first time, they malted the rye, and it made for me a significant improvement. It mellows out the sharp points and brings all the different flavors of the rich caramel toffee, sweet tobacco, oak, and the earthy undertone into harmony. Oh, I like that. I like that a lot. You know what? Whiskey and technology. What a great pairing. Just like the pairing of Kansas City Chiefs. Quarterback and tight end, Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey. Uh, all right. You don't want to talk about Taylor? <laughs> uh, no, 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 I got enough Taylor. All right, let's get, you talked about Taylor already. Well, That's right. All right, you let's. You can never have enough Taylor. Okay, are you a Swifty? Oh, there's a Swifty right over I, there. I can be one. I'm just not going to bag on her okay. for, for something that's, that's a, I, I, something I'm not silly bagging on her. I'm just saying. What you yes, you are. I, you totally bagged on her. I didn't bag on her. I just said I like You're Patrick You're like, I'm home. tired of seeing I'm her. I'm trying to see her on the course. All right, okay. No. What are you going to say, Odie? Oh, you're just jealous because you wish you were that successful. Oh, wow. She just comes on screen wow. and boom. Wow. Nobody cares about wow. the game. Yeah, nobody's oh. making deep fakes for you. <laughs> wow. Hang on. Oh. Oh. Hey, you, don't, you never know. Oh, are, is okay. that what you're doing at home? That. All right. <laughs> Let's get ready he's, now. He's making his he's own. He's making his own deep fakes. <laughs> Let's get ready now for our technology fail of the week brought to you by Elite Executive Services, technology experts to help you out of a technology fail. We are out of time. Congratulations. You're a failure. Oh. I failed. Did I? Yes. Did I? Yes. Did I? Yes. All right. Let's talk about this week's technology fail. It comes to us from Fulton County, Georgia. Woohoo! That, that is so They're, not a southern accent. Okay. A cyber attack has impacted the Fulton County, Georgia uh, city services. Whereas former President Donald Trump is currently being prosecuted for charges of attempting to overturn the 2020 U.S. presidential election. What we've learned is that Fulton has been struck by an incapable, incapacitating, incapacitating cyber attack. And the government is still kneecapped by the attack. The district attorney's office prosecuting Trump's case is currently unable to access critical systems like the Internet, phones, or the court system's website. According to a note on the Fulton County's website, this is kind of going back to this uh, uh, public versus private company type of deal. It says, uh, affecting Fulton County voice over IP phone systems as well as various other online systems. Over the weekend, Fulton County government learned the widespread system outage. At the time, they can confirm that the incident was a result of cybersecurity processes Said Pitts, this investigation has been reported to law enforcement and is currently under active investigation. The investigation is still in the early stages, so we will be providing limited information at this time. Pitts then added, at this time, we are not aware of any transfer of sensitive information about citizens or employees. We'll continue to look into this case and keep it carefully on top. Ransomware attacks are quite routine, as we know incapacitating governments for months. If Fulton has been impacted by one, it could take them some time for the county to fully operate again. We're going to head now. I wonder if they could do a change of venue under those circumstances. I don't know. It's just funny that he was listed there as, as that was kind of the screaming headline, but it still was the whole county that's been impacted. All right, let's go now right now to our Nathan Nugget. 
But what about my This okay. is your nugget of the week. If we week. got time, I'll go back to it. I'll go back to it. I, I got it here. All right. Okay. I, I would try to get through our I nugget. what you're doing. All right. So Windows 11 users can look forward to the 2024 season. Essentially, Notepad will be coming on out with all of the new improvements of AI. Microsoft is set to transform the traditional notebook experience on Windows 11 with a new AI feature aptly called CoWriter. This integration brings artificial intelligence directly into the text editor, offering users a wide range of smart editing tools. Notepad, CoWriter, also equipped with drop-down menus with options for length, tone, format, and instructions. This suggests a high-level customization, allowing the AI to modify the text according to the user's specifications. It's now going to support USB 80 gigabits per second support. An upcoming Windows 11 update will support the latest USB 80 gigabit standard. Essentially, this is the new powered, the, moving it from the 40 gigabit selection to 80 gigabits per second. All right. They also have Copilot. Copilot is the new name for Microsoft's AI, ChatGPT. It's going to be coming out in Windows 11 for all developers to use. And there's enhanced sharing options where Microsoft Edge and other browsers can now leverage the Windows platforms. So take a look at all the great new excitements that Windows 11 is going to be integrating all of their AI build coming up in the next few releases. All right, we got a couple minutes now. Let's go to our Mike's Mesmerizing Moment. This is Mike's Mesmerizing Moment, presented by Story Coffee. Visit storycoffee.com. All right, Mike, here's your Mesmerizing Moment. Should government entities spend more money in cybersecurity than private companies? Yes. Okay, explain that. We talked a little bit about that. Why? I don't think I need to explain it. (laughs) Well, I I, I want a little bit. uh, So you work for a government entity, right? I work for a government entity, yes. And how is their IT staff? Um, Well, it was a lot to be desired. Okay. Is is it getting better? It has gotten better in some respects, but it has gotten worse in others, so... (laughs) Okay. Uh, as far as as far as any of this stuff is concerned, I think everybody should be figuring out this cyber stuff. Okay. And government agencies need need to be more protected than I think private companies. They do. So, what the solution to that is? The solution to that is to pay top dollar quality. Yeah. IT people to come in and and fix this stuff, but you know that's not going to happen. So, well, I hope. Well, my, maybe it can. We can be a voice of reasoning for them, right? I'm sure that my my little piece here is going to change the world. Well, I'm hoping that's the that, case. That's not going to happen. It should happen. It, it, well, should. it should. It should because the private sector pays the most and they get the best security. But you really need the government sector with all the state funded process. They have so much more money. When you take a look at unallocated funds that come in for grants and that are subsidized by taxes, that they need to be on top of those yeah, items. They, that yeah, to. they they should. But the amount the amount of 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 I guess you could say the amount of the issue here yep. needs to be something that is brought to the forefront without compromising everything else. Okay. All right. Now. So. In a happy way, let's go to our pick of the day here. And now our pick of the day for our whiskey tastings. Let's see what bubbles to the top. All right, oh. what do we have here? What is Mark? bubbling today is Shanks Homestead Sour Mash Whiskey, released from 2023, is released from Michter's Distillery. It is American whiskey. It is 91.2 proof, and the price is $110. $110. Thumbs up or thumbs down? Thumbs up. Thumbs up. I give it a thumbs up. Do you have this on your shelf at home, Mark? Well, when I grab my bottle back from you, it will be. Okay, okay, all right, okay. Yeah, okay. I haven't had one before the 2023. I haven't, uh, they haven't never made it, and this one definitely will make it. Okay, all right. Well, we are just about out of time. We want to thank our listeners for joining the program. Listeners, we want to hear from you. So visit techtimeradio.com, click on the Be a Caller, and ask us for a question on technology or our talkback recording system. You can always stay connected by signing up for information on our website and check out our little blog and story features. Those are additional stories that we don't carry necessarily 
on the air. You know, it's always an honor to be the host of today's show. If you enjoyed the show, make sure you give us a five-star review on whatever podcast service you may be using today. So ending with today's show, Mike, what, what is our words that we're taking away from it besides uh, being depressed? We don't want to be depressed with technology. What, what, what's our uplifting inspiration that we should go into this week with? Drink more whiskey. Drink more whiskey. Yeah, how about that? <laughs> okay, Mark, thank you for being in studio today. <laughs> You're welcome. I like that sentiment, Mike. I, I think I would have chosen something different, but, but like I love too? the idea of drink more whiskey. Okay, well, you know, as we're about to leave... The science of tomorrow starts with the technology of today. Later. We'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining us on Tech Time Radio. We hope that you had a chance to have that hmm moment today in technology. The fun doesn't stop there. We recommend that you go to techtimeradio.com and join our fan list for the most important aspect of staying connected and winning some really great monthly prizes. We also have a few other ways to stay connected, including subscribing to our podcast on any podcast service from Apple to Google and everything in between. We're also on YouTube. So check us out on youtube.com slash tech time radio, all one word. We hope you enjoyed the show as much as we did making it for you. From all of us at tech time radio, remember mum's the word. Have a safe and fantastic week.